Stone, and I'm really going to miss Emma Stone because she died uh, in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 after the romance and the suspense between these two. We were wondering in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 with Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy. We're going to get back together after having waited two years. I find myself really caught up in the relationship uh, between the main actor and actress in a Spider-Man movie, and I feel as if they don't get back together, the movie really has its purpose defeated, and I think that with them not getting back together uh, in that movie, or at least not being able to have the relationship that they dreamed of having, and after getting back together, I felt that the movie's purpose was completely defeated, and I was really left in a state of depression when I realized that she had died at the conclusion of the movie when Spider-Man tried to save her by shooting his web from his hand. He got to her at the last minute, and she struck her head and die. don't mean to ruin it for you, it's just so depressing when you see an actress or an actor die uh, when the characters are almost meant to be together. I guess that's to set up for the entry of Mary Jane Watson, whoever's going to portray her in the up-and-coming release of The Amazing Spider-Man 3. I guess that's setting up for her to come into the Spider-Man series, this new project. I uh, really appreciate the romance and the intensity of the relationship uh, between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone on the big screen and on the Blu-ray and DVD. Uh, in the commentary and the interviews of the bonus features of the DVD and Blu-ray, you'll get a look into the relationship between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone. That's great, too, because they had great chemistry on the big screen and for the DVD and Blu-ray, and you'll get an inside look uh, on the relationship between them and the chemistry that we saw come to the forefront uh, for The Amazing Spider-Man 2. There were a lot of critical X factors that really put this movie over and why it got uh, the reviews that it did for the supervillains, the special effects, along with the script and the emotion that went behind the relationship uh, between Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker, Emma Stone, and Andrew Garfield. Very emotional relationship, probably the most emotional relationship that we saw between two characters, an actor and an actress for any of the Spider-Man movies, the previous five that we have seen. It's going to be six by the time The Amazing Spider-Man 3 is released by 2016 is when I see this dropping theatrically for the first time, and we'll get our questions answered from the previous two Amazing Spider-Man movies. One thing that I really appreciate what Mark Webb has done, apart from Sam Remy, the original director of the original Spider-Man movies from 2002 to 2007, a five-year project, which was awesome, Spider-Man 1 through 3, is the fact that Spider-Man's movies now, the Amazing Spider-Man movies, kind of leave you hanging with more questions than the original ones did. Yes, the original Spider-Mans were broken up into parts, but these movies now have more questions, and they really leave you hanging on the edge of your seat, having you waiting years to find out what's going to happen. There are fans who are trying to find out the release dates of these Spider-Man movies all the time because we have so many unanswered questions from the amazing Spider-Man that was originally dropped back in 2012, 50 years after the very first Amazing Spider-Man comic was released back in 1963. That's amazing to know how far back the Amazing Spider-Man comics go. And for fans of the Spider-Man comics, it was not only the same time that Walmart opened its doors for the first time ever, but it was also uh, the time that we saw, uh, you know, things like Spider-Man coming out for the first time. And, and, and it's just amazing how they've gone back through the history uh, with the amazing Spider-Man, and I think this movie really picks up where the original Spider-Man movies uh, left off. A cool thing about this movie is there are a lot of computer animation that is incorporated uh, into it. I love the computer animation and how you swinging. You see him swinging from building to building. Uh, I really love that the visuals of the amazing Spider-Man have definitely been updated uh, from the original uh, Spider-Man's back in 2002 from 2007. Uh, he was kind of just sitting down on a green screen, and they were capturing the visuals. But the visuals have been severely, and that's really the only word that I can use to describe the visuals of The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. The visuals have been severely updated, which is great uh, for the younger audience. And one of the biggest reasons why they have gone back through the history of Spider-Man and added in additional detail from the original Spider-Man movies, which wasn't included, in the 2002 release from 2002 to 2007, one of the biggest reasons why they have gone back through the history of Peter Parker and included things that were left out from the original history, which was looked at for the first time in 2002 for the very first Spider-Man movie, which was dropped on the big screen, is because we have a younger audience and fans who didn't get a chance to experience the original Spider-Man movies like myself and probably many of you did for the older age demographic. And you're probably sitting there watching it in theater or you're probably sitting at home watching it on DVD or Blu-ray. 
saying to yourself, what the fuck is going on here? If we're diehard Spider-Man fans, like the majority of people who will go see this are, we know what the history of Peter Parker, Gwen Stacy, and Mary Jane Watson, and all the supervillains are. If we've read the comics, more especially if we've seen the animated TV series, The Amazing Spider-Man, we know what the history of Spider-Man is. And some of you may look at the first hour, The Amazing Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and even The Amazing Spider-Man 3, in 2016 by then as a waste of time. The first hour was probably a waste of time because there was too much exemplification on the history, but I really appreciated the history that we saw uh, in The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. We had a lot of detail that was left out uh, from the original Spider-Man project, which was a five-year project, and you would have thought Sam Remy, with how fantastic of a director he was for the original Spider-Man movies, that that detail would have been included uh, with the Spider-Man movie, but I guess the script with too much detail is a really bad script, and it usually gets critical reviews. But there's really no reason to critically review uh, The Amazing Spider-Man. I thought the cast uh, was really cool for The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. Uh, the original cast returning with a few additional new cast members to play villains that have never been used in a Spider-Man movie before, and have never been in a Spider-Man movie before in terms of an actor or an actress. We had Felicia Hardy make her debut on the big screen for a Spider-Man movie. We had the Hog Goblin or Green Goblin, call him whatever you want, portrayed by a new actor for Harry Osborn. He did a great job. We had Electro played by a black person for the first time ever, which I found to be a very unique concept, updating the original Electro character from what he originally was. I could never remember the Electro character being blue, uh, so that was awesome, how they updated the look of the Electro character for the first time ever, and how they looked at how they created the Electro character uh, with the eels and everything, and the tank exploding down in the basement of Oscorp. That's awesome, how they tied in the story of the Hog or Green Goblin in with the Electro character, how an employee was killed on the job, and then the whole Oscorp corporation was put in a compromisable position. I loved how everything fell into place uh, with the Spider-Man 2 movie, uh, which was recently re uh, released, and I'm going to be loving how the Amazing Spider-Man 3 will pick up where this one has left off. Uh, there's a lot to expect from the DVD and Blu-ray, which drops in a little over two weeks from now. Uh, we're going to have additional scenes. We're going to have bloopers. We're going to have commentary. We're going to have interviews uh, with the cast. And one thing you really got to appreciate is the relationship on screen that the cast had for the filming of The Amazing Spider-Man Project with Mark Webb. Uh, I was kind of skeptical on the director uh, of Mark Webb for the original Spider-Man movie, which was dropped uh, back in 2000. And uh, 12, I was really skeptical on Mark Webb doing it because he was a producer of things like music videos, as I mentioned here earlier, for Miley Cyrus and Maroon 5 and many other celebrities in music. Uh, but he did a great job, and I think you couldn't have anybody better directing The Amazing Spider-Man Project, which is obviously going to be anywhere from a three- to five-year project. Uh, I really love how, what he's done uh, with The Amazing Spider-Man, and I love how it represents the comics so effectively. Uh, it feels like you're watching a comic book come to life with the updated computer animation. That's one thing that I always have appreciated with the Spider-Man movies, even the older uh, Spider-Man movies with Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst and William Dafoe uh, as the original Green Goblin. Uh, I love how the uh, visual effects have been updated and it feels like a comic book, and especially for fans of the original comic book. And not only have they updated the visual effects uh, for The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 from the original Spider-Man movies, but they've updated the video game feel for the first time in over a decade, The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which is one of the newer releases on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 from Activision. Really appreciate how they've updated the game's features with the map to navigate through the video levels with Spider-Man and the updated story mode with the visuals and the cutscenes. Really appreciate how they've updated the video game feel. They've updated everything. Uh, with The Amazing Spider-Man, and it's one of the newer releases on the PS3 and Xbox 360 now, and I do recommend you play the game and see the movie. It is awesome also the amount of merchandise they've been selling and they've distributed for The Amazing Spider-Man. They have put a phenomenal uh, promotional campaign behind this one, probably one of the most phenomenal promotional campaigns I have ever seen for a Spider-Man movie over the years. For the better part of the last 12 or 13 years, they have had phenomenal promotional campaigns and generated millions of dollars. They have dominated in the box office. And The Amazing Spider-Man 2 dominated for its time in the box office for a significant amount of time, for at least two out of the four weeks that it played for the entire month of May. Of course, it came out May 2nd, the original release date of the very first uh, Spider-Man back in 2002, which I found to be pretty authentic, how they took the original release date of the original Spider-Man movie and tied it in, incorporated it with The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Loved how they did that, uh, and I really appreciated 
how they've really updated everything uh, with the Amazing Spider-Man from the advertisemental campaign of the movie to the merchandise to the t-shirts to the action figures to the video games. They have done everything. They've gone above and beyond the requirements of a production team for the Amazing Spider-Man. And so many people had to be credited for the film's success. And I really appreciated how we got a British Spider-Man for the first time ever. That was something else along with the director of Mark Webb uh, and his direction of the movie uh, that I was really skeptical on. A British Spider-Man after going from Tobey Maguire to Andrew Garfield. You know, what was to expect? For the Amazing Spider-Man and the Amazing Spider-Man 2, and having even gone from Kirsten Dunst as the original Mary Jane Watson to Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy for the first time ever. I remember Emma Stone in movies like Marmaduke doing voiceover work, so I was really skeptical on Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone portraying Peter Parker for the first time ever, a British Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, and a Gwen Stacy instead of a Mary Jane Watson portrayed by Emma Stone, but they did a great job, and I think it was because of the chemistry they had and how intense and how emotional uh, the relationship was. One of the best promos ever dropped uh, in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 that could ever have been written into the script was the fact that life was so precious, in the words of Emma Stone, Gwen Stacy, because for one reason, and that reason was because it ends. And it kind of gave it away at the start of the movie in one of the first scenes between Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker, Emma Stone, and Andrew Garfield, that she was going to die. Either one of them were going to die. And because Spider-Man was radioactive after having previously been bit by a radioactive spider, obviously it was giving it away after that promo was dropped for a graduation speech where she said life was so precious as the valedictorian because it ends. You kind of knew at the end of the movie in one of the final scenes she was going to die. And I found the graveyard scene to be pretty emotional. I didn't cry uh, during Spider-Man. I felt like crying because of the relationship between Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield being so phenomenal. I felt like really breaking down, uh, but I didn't. But I don't know what it is with Hollywood putting out these movies where the superheroes don't survive. Batman died, and The Dark Knight Rises back in 2012. 